Sup, you beautiful bastards. Welcome back to the Philip DeFranco Show. I got a fantastic Sunday show for you today. We're going to go through all the biggest news stories from the last week that mattered most to you. But before we deep dive into that, to try to get a sense of things, I'm going to kick it over to our frustrated recap correspondent, Zed Tabani. Zed? Hit the gas stove, what an asshole. Fucking up the game like I'm Hasbro. Keep a couple copies in a back row. Give a golden globe out to Santos. You know he deserve it. He lying so we can grab votes. What's up, you beautiful bastards? Bitch, I be on my coffee. All these motherfuckers looking sloppy. Buy a couple eggs, but never hatch any copies. Threaten litigation and back down when you got me. Black Lives Matter get banned like Hasanabi. Everybody scroll, but feeling a little costly. Motherfuckers googling, where do I hide the body? Fans out of Billy's and Lolo's who start socking. None of this shit shocking, like Kevin helping a Nazi. What did you expect? Grifters on committee, plus they threatened in the debt with the same motherfucker who was stealing from a vet, trying to save a dog from death till they made a GoFundMe and then pocketed the check. George. What the fuck is real anymore? Taking pills from diabetics like their bodies got a morph for another new aesthetic. All my eggs are running short. Got an AI as my doctor when he write me what I want. I've been fucking up the matrix. Raining out in Cali, flooding everywhere you link shit. Fuck that little tape grip. You still up in jail, bitch. Last of Us Amazing and Velma just fucking ain't it. Mindy Kaling, what the fuck is this? Feel like the internet came together to hate this shit. Meanwhile, Pedro in his bag with the Ramsey kid. Who would've thought to shut up and do what the game did? Like, put me on top. I'm like Keith Lee. I be blowing up your spot whenever I fucking talk. They be saying shots fired like Alex be getting caught. You get dropped in a layoff soon as you fucking bought. Like GameStop get chopped, your reservoir get stopped. Your flight might get docked, your license get slopped They might take your plot till they say they not You just come back strong like you can't heat Quan, look at Today we're learning that President Biden's legal team found another batch of classified documents A source saying this these documents came from searches that began after the November discovery of the classified docs for President, of now President Biden's time as Vice President Couple in the pen, and one up in the garage A few up in the house near the couch, check the ski lodge The PR is crazy, beyond is crazy These aren't the same things, but they are for ratings. Now everybody look up at the optics, be a little toxic. Everybody talk shit. Wait, proud of getting mad off a 50 mil pay, so we cross a couple wires in a civil war. Hey! Everybody yelling this, Candace Walsh's looking like the office and every other podcast. Proud of saying slave pay, looking at the offer of 50 million dollars. Jesus. What you talking about? Enough money to slap Anderson across the mouth. My whole generation living at our parents' house are burning out like Arden. Turn me down. I'm just trying to make it off a catalog. They strong man, it's like it's Britney with a camera on. Or fuck us over, we'll be working at an Amazon. Spending more money than we make, like it's Babylon. Guess I gotta lean into the mess, like a Twitter motherfucker paying money for a check. Probably write another book and then fake my death. I come back next year, be like, hi, it's Zed. Whoa, starting off strong. Too soon? No, oh, buddy, we missed you last week. But that said, where we're gonna start this breakdown is with Monday. On Monday, we did have a little bit of a lighter show because it was MLK Day, but we still managed to look at the major developments involved in the Andrew Tate case and talked with an expert about body image issues. So starting with Andrew Tate and the details we're slowly getting about the case the Romanians have against him, we started saying things like the WhatsApp messages where he told a woman she couldn't go anywhere alone, as well as an alleged voice recording of him essentially admitting to raping someone, with some of his defenders trying to claim that those recordings were clearly kink-related. Also, speaking of defenders, it was crazy to see how many of them were marching in the streets of Athens, but that's not going to speed up Tate's release. In fact, it's now being reported that authorities have decided to hold him for another 30 days till at least February 27th. However, regarding the, the kink defense of Andrew Tate, some of you were pushing back against that. Like one of you beautiful bastards who wrote, as a kinkster, I'm horrified people are claiming this sounds like consensual kink play. He sounds like every douchebag fake dom that tries to lure newbies into an abusive relationship by claiming it's kink. While others pointed out things like, every time I hear about the kink community, they always talk about communication and consent. Without both, it can become SA. If the voice message is true, it sounds like an SA case. Like consent was revoked and he didn't listen. And I also kind of get why Dash said this. Everything I know about Andrew Tate has been against my will. Good God, I do not care for this guy, but he's everywhere. Which I will say, I kind of understand that frustration, though it's uh, on different topics. Like the new Twitter, for example, that for you tab they fucking gave. Literally, that feed is like rage bait. Like people I actively do not follow. I want to stay away from their content because I don't want to be angry at all times. And Twitter's like, hey, look at this fucking insane bullshit. Don't you want to say something? Don't you want to just ruin your whole weekend and have both of your fans arguing and staying on the platform? But also, you know, when it comes to Twitter, I'm probably far more critical of that because I don't agree with the person at the helm. But there is an argument that just by ignoring assholes with massive audience, it doesn't make them go away. And I do think there's a benefit to someone being such a big focal point of conversation and them having such a big audience 
that we do cover certain people because I think it's important that if you're going to like see someone for the first time, that you get a fuller picture. Right? Openly talking about toxic issues is often the only way for people to learn about them, which is also why we ended up speaking to a few experts about body image issues. And in particular, delving into this heroin chic look making a comeback. With this, so many of you came out to talk about how this specific trend had long lasting effects on your lives and how you view your bodies. It really just reinforces what those experts were saying, that these trends have consequences. Though Lady Spider here doesn't actually think that it ever went out of fashion, saying as someone who has recovered from an eating disorder I do want to say that the whole movement around heroin chic never went away. People just got more careful about hiding their idealization of super thin bodies. COVID caused a spike in eating disorders and this becoming a trend again feels at least to me like an inevitable result of a combination of social media and collective extreme stress. Although Vanna's experience suggests that the ideal body type does fluctuate as she wrote, as a 24 year old woman who went through the thick BBL era as a young person and who felt pressure to change my body in a way that wasn't natural to me to be desirable, I feel bad for young women with heroin chic coming back. I wish we'd stop making body type a trend, embracing your unique features and style will always be the way to go. And we had people like Ladybug sharing their approach to the whole issue, saying in high school, when I was a size zero, I had body issues and felt like I needed to lose weight because I kept seeing people online who were thinner and looked better. Luckily, that didn't become a feeling I acted on and after high school, I realized how bad social media was for me, so I deleted Instagram and stopped posting pictures of myself online. These days, I prefer interest-focused social media to person-focused because I don't want to feel bad and compare myself to others ever again. I also want to add with this story why it gives me such an appreciation for us having now this Sunday show. You know, on any given show, we might be talking about like five to 10 topics. And just being able to hear so many just unique individual experiences and that can like continue the conversation, especially within like a week. It's great. It's eye opening and it gives me an extra appreciation for y'all. And then on Tuesday, we talked about the Britney Spears situation, AI art getting sued, Mexico banning smoking in public. First thing here, and probably the most important, I'd like to thank KT Cat for noticing. Yes, I am so close to my thirst trap era. If YouTube keeps suppressing these videos. I might need to launch that OnlyFans. Sorry, Lindsay. If it makes you feel any better, like 95% of the subscribers are going to be men. Why? Because this is going to be controversial. The gays of the beautiful bastard DeFranco nation have been riding with me since day one of this new mission and hyping me up since that first failed hike. Well, of course, I appreciate any of the kind support from everyone. Know that as I continue this fitness journey, I'm doing it for the male gays. And you can spell that G-A-Y-S or G-A-Z-E. Both are accurate. But diving into the serious topics, Julian was apprehensive about Mexico's smoking ban, saying that law enforcement will just use this new law to extort money from citizens instead of enforcing it. And unfortunately, I'm not surprised by that comment, as it was pretty much what a lot of people were saying from the start, with Julian going on to say how students in his area already flaunt a ban on selling vapes and just pay the police off, which kind of creates a system and cycle where the cops know if they harass people smoking, they can get money for doing it. And at the same time, people breaking the law know that they can just do so for a few extra bucks. Also, we had the situation where Getty Images got to look like the good guy for a lot of you by going after stability AI and its AI art generation tool, Stable Diffusion, with Angel here particularly ecstatic, but also wondering why it didn't happen sooner, saying, I've been waiting for a big company to sue over AI art. I'm shocked that Disney hasn't pulled a lawsuit as well, given how you can generate Disney IP-based images that were clearly trained using official Disney art. But one of the biggest responses and takeaways for many of y'all was that opting out of having your art used to train AIs was not enough, with people wanting rather an opt-in. Although, as someone who's had to deal with Getty Images, I did have a laugh at the mask's take, which was the irony of Getty Images suing Stability AI for using pictures without a license is hilarious hilarious considering Getty Images practically trademarks every image imaginable just to generate revenue. However, the main thing that people were talking about on this video was Britney Spears. Right? She was trying to have a dinner and it quickly devolved into people filming her. And probably the most consistent take was, Leave Britney alone! Right, Kate pointing out that Britney Spears has been through so much and she deserves peace. Like she just wants to enjoy a meal like the rest of us. And she was hardly the only one who thought that it just wasn't right that this was happening to Spears, that she couldn't enjoy a meal with some semblance of privacy. With others also pointing out that even if Britney was having a manic episode, it doesn't negate the fact that she should just feel frustrated that she was being filmed all the time in public. And Brinley was actually confused why people thought she was having a meltdown at all, saying, I almost laughed when you showed the Britney video. If I saw that with zero context, I would literally just think she was talking to the waiter while trying to be heard over loud music and that the camera was too far away for anything she says to be understood. Actually, I still think that. Another overall consensus was that places like TMZ need more accountability and that this culture of filming celebs needs to go. With Caspian Rose's writing, the South Park episode about Britney feels more and more relevant as it goes on. Britney literally can't just exist as a human. Shame on TMZ. Shame on people that film celebrities just existing. Shame on those leeches that make celebrities' lives shitty just for clicks. While Nerd Fiction said, we need harsher consequences against sites like TMZ. Don't prevent media from posting, but allow citizens to sue the shit out of them when they do shit like this.
this. And then I was that kid that wouldn't like eat or drink anything green. Well, that slowly changed over the years. Oh man, if I had athletic greens, it would have changed in a day. I'm drinking that every morning and not only is it helping my body, it's helping the show because they're also sponsoring today's show. AG1 by Athletic Greens is a nutritional drink that's created a movement around simplifying your health routine. It supports your energy, focus, gut health, digestion, immune system, and more. Each scoop of AG1 is nine health products in one, giving you the equivalent of a multivitamin, probiotic, minerals, and more. So you don't need to be that person with all those supplements piling up on your countertop. And Athletic Greens invests in high quality ingredients, going above and beyond to ensure what's on the label is exactly what's in the powder. It mixes well with water, and it's honestly the best tasting, highest quality nutritional drink I've ever tried, making it an essential part of my routine. Plus, it supports the healthy intentions I'm setting for myself every day. And the best part, they're giving you added immune system support with a free one-year supply of vitamin D3K2 plus five individual travel packs with your purchase. It'll be hard to find a better, more comprehensive supplement. So go to athleticgreens.com slash DeFranco or just click that link below to get a one-year supply of vitamin D drops plus five travel packs with your first purchase of AG1. And then we have Wednesday with uh, YouTube just killing this video by, I think we are, are we the first video they did this to? We got a viewer discretion is advised screen. We got age gated. Like I've been age gated before, but there was a viewer discretion advised screen. So it killed the video being promoted. And then even when people were going and finding the video, I had a number of people saying when they click the button, they still couldn't access and watch the video. And because the YouTube system is so inconsistent, so stupid, I can't even say why that happened and why we think it's wrong, but whatever. You're not here to hear me whine. But on this video, first off, there were a substantial amount of people that were kind of shocked that I was covering book news, which like, one, I can understand it. Maybe it's like a niche hobby to some degree. So we've talked about book talk in this space in the, in the past, but also just the pure insanity of the story we covered. Of course, I'm going to cover that. Like if the person at the center of that story wasn't an author and instead they were like a vegetable pickler, I would have still covered that news. Though I will say there were people like Sarah that said regarding kind of the book world, it is important to note how toxic it is. Writing, while I understand any community can be toxic, I've had my closest friends in the community turn on me when I set boundaries and the bullies are relentless. And going on to say that she was shocked that grown adults can still bully people so relentlessly. And Beth saying one of the reasons I'm most upset is that all their friends she had made talked about the immense guilt they felt and all the sorrow people were needlessly put through friends and fans. And noting that the person at the center of the story doesn't think she did anything wrong. But that is where I'm gonna leave that story. I feel like I'm trying to jump through so many hoops just so this video doesn't get shut down as well. But it does take us to the story regarding the near kidnapping of a barista. Right? Some dude goes to hand her money, then grabs her, tries to zip tie her, drag her out the window. And while this, of course, an extreme outlier, according to people like Aline, dealing with crazy customers isn't that rare anymore. Writing, I've been in customer service for 10 years. Customer behavior has been getting beyond scary recently. I noticed a huge increase in customer aggression about one year into the pandemic. I work in pet health and customers scream, threaten to find my office. Some even stalked my coworkers online and emailed back in with personal details they found about the employees. That's too much to handle as a worker. It feels like people are snapping from all the stress in the world. However, what was really scary to read was the fact that so many of you had stories about customers threatening you, attacking you, or even trying to kidnap you. Right? You had people like Nathan having this story about a man who came in, seemed pleasant, and then dropped the bomb that he had terminal cancer. But that wasn't the weird part. Instead, writing, when I started checking him out, he leaned in over the counter and said in a low voice, you better not run now or I'm gonna beat your ass. I immediately assumed that he was gonna rob me, but he leaned back and started started laughing like he told the funniest joke in the world. You know, how you threaten violence against a stranger, you know, as a joke. Meanwhile, we had people like the Glitches Purple talking about how when she was 19, a customer came in when she was alone working at a bar and nearly abducted her and saying she was lucky that a security member just so happened to come by then and stop the encounter. Or BK's story about working at a drive through where young women were forced to work the window since they were perkier only to then be harassed. And even talking about an incident when a customer got upset and came back right away with a BB gun and shot it at my coworker through the window. But for a lot of you, the, the story about crazy customers and the situation with Billie Eilish having to deal with a stalker actually went hand in hand. Because there were a ton of stories about people dealing with stalkers who started because they saw y'all at work. Ava telling us about a friend who had to deal with a stalker who would go out of his way to only order his food with her and it eventually escalated to him following her to her car. Saying it even got to a point where she quit her job over it and for a while she dealt with severe anxiety when she was in public because she'd see people out and about and think that they were him. And Trendia highlighting a pickle a lot of you find yourselves in. As someone who's been both stalked and almost kidnapped, it's incredibly unnerving to see other people in similar situations. I'm currently working in the fast food industry and I know these horrifying situations happen, but what can I do but keep working when I don't have the qualifications for a safer job? And then on Thursday, we had a massive show. We talked about everything from the Logan Paul v. CoffeeZilla situation, New Zealand's prime minister stepping down, the Ozempic shortage. Uh, we talked to experts
language about a current mass extinction event. And then there was even more, but starting with the Logan Paul apology, where he was talking about how he handled the crypto zoo drama, his $1.3 million plan to fix the situation with Adriel writing. Logan is only sorry he got caught. His plan freaking sucks. I really hope he gets sued to the ground because this is unbelievable. He even posted a tweet that the Matrix is after him and it's just pathetic. He will blame anyone but himself for his horrible actions. Then regarding the Ozempic situation, you had Biefeld talking about how it's impacted his mother and that he's been on the struggle bus trying to get it, saying she tried switching medications originally, but it caused a pretty bad allergic reaction. So now we have to import it because local pharmacies don't have it and that doesn't even work all the time. So it's been a big struggle for her. Well, Ray Dufresne talked about how it's not just people trying to lose weight that are eating up products for diabetics, saying there's also a huge issue with fitness people buying up diabetic tech that saves lives, namely continuous glucose monitors, saying this tech is life-saving and is putting lives at risk. A nine-year-old boy just died in protective custody because they took away his insulin pump, saying he was playing with it. Diabetic ableism is killing us. Which I will say, like, looking into this news, also this conversation, it, wow. I already imagined that it was hard enough as it is to be diabetic, but it sucks to know that multiple things that are necessities to literally keep people alive are just being eaten up by people who likely could function just as easily with alternatives. And I can't imagine the struggle like some like crazy rage quitter is going through after just being diagnosed with type 2 diabetes and a month later still not being able to get meds. We also had a number of people talking about Ardern's sudden resignation. And there, as expected, the reactions were mixed. Right? Because while internationally she was widely popular at home, it was more complicated. And in general, I got the feeling that many felt she was trying to please too many people and couldn't deliver on some of the major promises that her party made when they took power. But again, want to stress this, I do not live in New Zealand, so I'm not in the thick of it. But comments like this one from Dakota Jade give us a little bit more insight. From Aotearoa and you hit the nail on the head. On New Zealand Twitter, resign Jacinda was a common hashtag the past couple of years. Conservatives obviously hate her, leftists think she's too passive, but personally I admire her. She knew we deserved the best and she put the country first. I hope she enjoys her well-deserved time off. But then that brings us to our conversation with scientists about the sudden drop off of insects and life on Earth. With a lot of people having sentiments like crystals, who said appreciate the last segment of this news episode. A lot of people need a good perspective of what humanity has been doing to this planet. Depressing, but it is reality. The way we do things needs to change, like 50 years ago. It was also kind of just a general love and appreciation for the fact that we're using our platform to spread information that's important from experts in their fields. With people saying, once again, giving scientists a platform in the news and sharing the incredible work they're doing. The state of our global biodiversity is unsettling and spreading the facts about it can help us all make better decisions in where we put our money. But also with this, I did see a number of comments with people saying things like, makes me scared to have kids. I don't want them to inherit a doomed planet. It's time we get our shit together. And on that, Happy note, that's where I'm gonna end today's show. Thank you for another fantastic week. I appreciate y'all. And we're gonna do the whole thing again starting tomorrow. Get that brand new Philip DeFranco show Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Sunday. Let's close it how we always do. My name's Philip DeFranco. You've just been filled in. I love yo faces and I'll see you tomorrow.